So I like gates. So here's my gate for the front garden. And this is a shape of uh, three keyhole garden bed right in a row. And it's growing luxuriously. You can see these rocks outlining the keyhole. And then here's the keyhole. And you can really easily reach all your all your vegetables, your plantings. Our keyhole, it's overgrown. Look at it. Everything is overgrown. This is a lemon type of a lemony flavored balm. So here's the herb spiral. This one here has kind of gotten out of hand. We got to start eating on it. Herbs, look at all the different herbs, and just one after the other, right on up the spiral. And at the top we have rosemary. Here's our bluestone keyhole garden bed. And the deer came and ate all the beans that were planted on it. So then up went the fence. And here's a brick keyhole garden bed. These are recycled bricks from a big building they're tearing down in town. They're sand bricks that were made in 1904 right here in Manitowoc. That keyhole inviting, you want to sit your knees right in there and get the planting. Behind this bluestone keyhole garden bed we have uh, two apple trees planted, three hazelnut bushes, a number of gooseberries, currants, goji berries, and um, a pear tree, a little pear tree, dwarf. So hopefully that all gets along. Here we have blackberries planted, and behind that are grapes, and the grapes are going to grow up the fence. I'm actually going to put up a, um, an overhang on these posts so the grapes can grow on, onto that overhang and the grapes can be hanging from that overhang. That'll be interesting. But right now I got four grape vines in here and I'm gonna add a couple more. I'm gonna look to overplant it with grapes and then heavily prune them on the way up and let them just, the winter takes all at the top. And then the blackberries here will be underneath and we'll get a harvest from the blackberries. And they're doing very well too friend uh, is moving and he says you can have them go dig them up I went and dug them up I planted 12 in here but I could see two of them aren't coming up and we're gonna have 10 like right there's one that's not doing anything oh and then I planted a surprise plant in here well, let's see if I have any of them growing what the heck are they? gotta be something in here or something like that. Mm -hmm. here we go that is a shishandra vine so I raised that myself by seed. There's quite a few of them in here. I think I planted 10 or 12 in here. And I, don't, I thought there was another one down in here somewhere. That deer might have came and ate them. Yeah, There's one over here. This one made it. That one's making it. It's Sandra Vine. And I see the one way there in a the corner made it. So, if a number of those make it, that'll be a addition to the harvest. Okay, let's go to the back. This is what I call the garage garden. Gated area. Right there you have uh, yakons growing. First time I ever tried those. Doing pretty well. I got it mulched on a, on a bed, raised bed. And then, let's see what else we got in here. We got a line of hot peppers in here. I think there's some sweet peppers too, but we're going to get a harvest. There's some clover growing in here that I've allowed to grow. 
right here I just planted um, fall radishes and I'm protecting them from the birds and everything you can see they're just starting to come up right there this whole bed is interspersed with the seeds different types of radishes too and then the back bed is uh, black beans and I've got buckwheat growing with them I'm letting the buckwheat go to seed I'm going to see if I can harvest some of it and then plant it next year see how well it works and here's my wild patch of stinging nettles I was just reminded of it because I just brushed my leg against it <laughs> yeah they really like growing in here I use it for compost and we eat some of it in the spring. Here we got a uh, ringed around the stinging nettles are potato plants. It's a late planting, they were on uh, clearance. I think it's almost three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe it might, it might have been a month ago that I bought them. And I just ringed them right around. For some reason they didn't come up right in here. And some more. There's some behind the beans too. See right there. Ooh, look at that bumblebee. Uh, back here, I've got some mulberries incubating. They're really little, and they're compete with the weeds. They're not doing that great. But uh, I decided just to let it go. I got a lot of mulberry trees, so the winter is going to take all. Come free. And back here I have uh, Chinese chestnuts being incubated. And there's a couple of hybrids in here too at the back. Let's see right there. That's a hybrid. Right there. And there's one right next to it. It isn't doing that great. That's a hybrid there too. There's a few pawpaws back in here. That's a pawpaw. In the shade of these blackberries and, and grapes. There's another bed of radishes right there. I didn't plant anything on here this spring, so these radishes have got this all to themselves. This has been a mound of straw, and I added comfrey leaves to it and stinging nettle leaves to it. Hey, we got another rabbit back here. I'm telling you, I got dozens and dozens of rabbits here. It's like we're a beacon. All this less wild growth, and here they come. That's okay. That's why I got all these gates and fences and just a matter of keeping them out. I didn't grow, put the gate in here yet, but I'm working on it. You see this side I got uh, a wire fence in. Last year I had rabbits come in here and chew these kiwis right down to nothing. Well, they really responded to that, but I don't want them to chew them down next year. So the one male kiwi, he's over the garage roof already. One year they put that growth on. Huge, and two vines out of one root, just huge, huge vines. And I've got uh, four females in here, and I have one, the, the one that's growing up to the garage, that's a Chinese type that I was, I was told was a Chinese. It was given to me by a organic farmer here in the area. And then um, I've got, I put just, just as a countermeasure or uh, contingency plan. I've got a hardy male in here too, a hardy kiwi male in here, just in case. I got four females, and these females I'm going to be putting up some really sturdy posts, and I'm going to actually drape them over this little walkway here, and then let them grow down into the little garage garden, and then hopefully the fruit hangs down from those posts because I, I was I'm told that each vine could give you a hundred pounds of kiwi. Well, there's no way that that trellis I built there along the garage is going to handle 400 pounds of kiwis, plus all the vines. But it'll handle the, the males. I'll let the males stay there. I don't want them to go across, and I'm only going to let the females go across. That'll be a nice little tunnel effect here. There's a 550-gallon water tank I picked up on uh, Craigslist last winter, and it's sinking on one side. So um, it's been dry. I'm, I'm using the water now for the garden. And once it dries out, I'm going to have to level it back out.
Here we have uh, another what I call a fruit fence. We have mulberries. You see the mulberry there to the right, right next to the water tank there, right on the post. Then we have three blackberry canes. And we have grapes. There's two grapes in a row. And uh, beyond the comfrey plant there, there's more grapes and more blackberries. Until we finally get to a line of kiwis. And in front, we have comfrey and we have honeyberries growing out of this hookah culture. So the plan is, is I'm going to spell you the mulberries and the grapes are going to grow on the branches of the mulberries and the blackberries are going to grow up in between them all. Here's a little spot where I've got some kiwis growing. There's one male there right on the end. The larger leaves, you can see it up against that post there to the left. And to the right here, I got these females, but these, these kiwis, I've noticed, they like to curl. Now, this is the only the second year that I've grown them, and I'm starting to notice things now. And One is, if you look at a grapevine, like over here, these grapes have little, little fingers, tendrils, and they'll wrap around this fence and then hold themselves up. So that fence works pretty good for them. But if you come over here to the kiwis, you can see they're curling around there. And I don't know if that's going to be a good thing to have them curl around that fence. So I'm going to probably, I'm going to put some posts up uh, along here. Out in front of the fence. And I like them when they curl around the post. I think that's what they're meant to do. When they get a little thicker vine, I can see they're going to get choked off from that fence. That's something I'm going to do. Had some extra tomato plants and I look for different spots to put them and put, them, put a couple of them out in front here. They're actually growing pretty good. Didn't even stake them yet. I'm out of stakes. There's a goji berry. Right there's a goji berry. From this little spot I got tomatoes, kiwi, goji. This is a mulberry tree right here. <coughs> and grapes. Oh, and there's a blackberry right here. Nice blackberry. Nice plant. Oh, there's a really nice blackberry over here. You gotta see this. Right over here. Let's bring this over here. That one. That was a sickly old thing that was getting hammered. This is three years old. I bought it on clearance, and it barely made the first summer. And then last summer it did okay. It sent one cane up, and then that got chewed to the ground by the rabbits. And now that thing is really growing well. There's four nice big fat canes here coming up. So next year, if I can keep it away from the rabbits, I'll bet I'll have a, just a bunch of blackberries on this one. Sitting here all by itself next to this mulberry tree. So this is the back of the shed. This is on the north side. We're getting the morning sun now shining in here. I bought a tub, but I never got to put any worms in it. And it's early August now, so I doubt that I'll even do it this year. I had to go back to work, put in more hours than I expected, so uh, you know you can only do so much in between work. Then I built this pedestal for this 210 gallon water tank, and the back posts are sinking in the ground. So as soon as it's empty, and it's been a dry, dry July, and I'm working on this water, and I, this, uh, all indication are we're going to have a dry August too. So all this water will be out of here and all. I actually cut the front two posts down. I'll level that back out. But it receives water from this little shed. It's not a huge catchment, but it's not a huge tank either. I'm looking for another one. I like to put another one up here too. Right alongside. And then get another tub underneath that. I have two worm farms going. Beyond the worm farm, you can see I got a anaerobic compost bin. Here we have the cabbage and kohlrabi. And there's also onions planted in there. I've been harvesting a kohlrabi every day. And these last ones are getting monstrous. Let me show you this. Look at that. 
That's a monster. These two monsters growing together. And they're just as tender. We got cabbages. Got some cabbages growing in the back. In amongst the spring onions. In front of the grapes. And here we had uh, kohlrabis in all this bare area here. And I had onions growing in here, and the onions got pretty smashed, so we'll see if they come back. And here the onions are doing a little better here. This is all kohlrabis. And of course, after I harvested them, all the, all the cabbage has got the, spite, the spot all in themselves. I'm incubating some cherry trees, some plum trees, and some service berries in that pile of weeds there. Back here is my asparagus patch that I planted peas in. Got a great harvest of peas. This has raised a couple of clutches of nut hatches. And you should see when they're feeding babies, it's just a non-stop back and forth of bugs. They go down in the garden, they grab a bug. I don't even see any bugs, but they find them. And right up to the baby, so that's pest control. And fertilization. So this is a tomato patch for this year. Growing marvelously. Lush. There's also peppers in here and borage. There's a nice borage plant and milkweed. I've actually seen quite a few monarchs this year where I didn't see them in years past. You see the tomatoes? Get some really nice ones coming. The whole patch is full. Here's some that are yellow. Oh, this one's probably ready to eat. Look at there. Look at that. Right here. First tomato of the year for me. I'm going to eat it right now. Mmm. Oh, it's sweet. So again, I got porridge plants planted in there as a companion plant. And there's peppers in here. I did this last year and the peppers didn't grow that well, but they all gave me a crop. And the pepper plants are actually uh, companion plants to the tomatoes. Here's one right here. Oh, we're going to get a crop off that one in the front. There's a clearance on potatoes and onion sets. So I got some of these um, containers out that I was delivered with trees in and I planted the trees out and I just went and planted them in there. There's onions. The potatoes are like 29 cents a pound for seed potatoes and uh, there was a hundred sets in there for, I think it was 39 cents or something. So I bought 500 sets and I planted them all over the place and I planted some of these containers too. So here are some of these onions that I planted right next to these tomatoes, line of tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, and then all these onions. I think I got 250 of them in here I fit in here. I'm not going to eat them as bulbs. Well, maybe the last couple will bulb up. But as they grow, I'm going to be taking them as scallions. I found a place for them. Behind the tomatoes is the garlic. The front line of garlic is soft. It's called Polish Red. And the back row of garlic, it's a hard neck. I call it Manitowoc Commercial Grade. I actually bought it from somebody in, in uh, Upper Peninsula, Michigan, back in the late 90s. And then I planted it and for a couple of years. You know, you, you do the thing, you take the best cloves and replant the cloves in the fall. And then for about 10 years, I didn't do anything. And they had to survive on their own. They planted themselves. They got pretty small, but they competed with the weeds and they made it. And then all of a sudden I'm interested in gardening again, I think four or five years ago. And they began to do the glow thing and they just popped right up into being the same big, huge uh, garlic that I've been, that, you know, that I purchased from those, from that farm in Upper Michigan. 
But now I call it Manitowoc Commercial. He called it Commercial Grade. It's all he, the only name he knew for it. But now I call it Manitowoc Commercial Grade because it is acclimated through that wilding process I put it through. Ten years of no care, no replanting. And the best survived. If it was weak, it died. Here's the other row of uh, Manitowoc County Commercial Grade Garlic. There's 50 bulbs in this one, 50 cloves I planted here. The other row I think has uh, 100. I planted them more densely in the other row. Here's my little polyculture set up as a Garden of Eden type setup with wood chips on the ground. I got apples, cherries, pears, hazelnuts, chestnuts, diff different types of apples. I got sea berries. Korean nut pines, Siberian peach rubs. Then there's a number of um, perennial plants. There's comfrey, there's mint, there's rhubarbs. All grown in this little spot here. I'd say it's uh, 40 by 20. They're going to have to all get along. So hopefully what happens, I actually planted clover in amongst the uh, wood chips. And this actually has a base of cardboard. I laid cardboard over the lawn. And I've got three or four inches of wood chips over the top of that. And these are wood chips that were beginning to decompose. They were older. And then I planted the clover seed in it. And the rabbits and the deer have come in here and just continued to chew on it. Um, it's growing. But eventually what I want is for this to be a totally shaded area. And there won't be any clover growing in it then. It'll just be shaded with these bushes and these, these dwarf, semi-dwarf trees. Mixed in a polyculture. Now the advantages of a polyculture, here's a couple. One is pests. You know, if you have apple tree that's invested, you know, infested with a pest or maybe a disease, well, if you have an apple tree right next to it, it's easy for that pest or disease to jump from one tree to another. So you have different types of trees separating the apples. You, know, you have a pear, you have a cherry, and that pest jumps into the pear tree, it doesn't recognize that as food. So that's one of the benefits. The other benefit is uh, it's also been documented here recently that trees feed each other. And of course different trees utilize different nutrients or maybe utilize them differently. And if they have a surplus of one nutrient, they'll feed it to the tree next door through the fungi relationship. Now that's very interesting. I'm going to do this as an experiment that this is going to happen. They're going to feed each other, take care of each other. Quite different from the competitive nature we all are we're taught to believe. It's the lowest spot in the garden. And I have a bed of onions, shallots, potato onions, garlic and horseradish, and kohlrabi, clover, Porridge, clover, cucumbers, and three beds of potatoes that I recently had strings of climbing peas around. But I had a magnificent pea harvest and I pulled them all down and put some of the peas in the compost and put some in the garden as mulch. And then along the back the south fence I have grapes, blackberries, and there's some kiwi in there. There's some little plum trees in here, nana plums they call them, they only get five, six feet tall. On the other side of the fence I have actually a double layer of fence, and they're six, seven feet apart. And in between the fences I have currants and gooseberries and goji berries and ronia. There's some mulberry in there. Nanking cherries, Hanson cherries, Josta berries, Oris berries different times of currants all in that area. Here I'm incubating a plum tree. There's a little gala apple. These are thimbleberries. Here we have elderberries. I got shishandra vines growing on here and some grape, grape vines. Now this is the main crop garden. There's a six foot high fence around it and I got ten foot posts. I'm actually putting a cable at the top of those ten foot posts and I'm allowing the grapes to grow up onto it. Looks good. Everything looks good back here.
So there's a swale here that I'm walking in, and I have a swale mound from the camera all the way to where I'm standing, and I have a spillway, and there's another swale mound back here. This swale mound has uh, chestnuts growing on it, and cherries, and then the cover crop is birds for trefoil. Got a few onion sets in here. And uh, before swale mound, I've got blackberries, and chestnut, buffalo berry, sea berries, put some tomato plants in there, some borage plants, pepper plants, a plum tree, more sea berries, winter berry, winter, winter green, it's all on this top swale mound. And I got some clovers growing in between them as a cover crop. So this is the other direction in front of the main crop garden. Now we're pointing towards the south, whereas the other one we're pointing north. This is a shorter section, but on the swale mound we have bird's foot trefoil, we have sea berries, we have a plum tree, we have two European hazelnuts, we have a number of goji berries, and then on the left I'm incubating uh, 20 Russian apple trees. These are the only apple tree that has a taproot. I'm going to dig them up and plant them up north on the wild land this fall after they drop their leaves. In the corner I've got a Siberian pea shrub, a hazelnut bush, pear tree, a hybrid chestnut, mulberry, sweet crab apple, there's a sea berry, there's a buffalo berry, there's a Hansen's cherry, all in that little corner there, right out, right out tight against the, the fence. All together. We're going to see how they grow together. This is the north side of the property. This is a path that leads into my zone five and then back into my zone four. Those are permaculture zones. Zone five would be a wild land. Anything goes. Zone four would be more closer to um, a food forest. Well, let's go take a look. Here we are in the zone five, just a bunch of plants. This, the overstory here is black walnut. There's, there's one, two, three, four. There's four trees, one very mature tree, and three of them that are close to giving nuts. Actually, one of those three is, I can see nuts on it right now. This is not the most mature tree, but it's got a nut on it, got nuts on it there. And um, three of the trees are on my property. The main one is on the neighbor's property. So we're walking through here and I've got a American persimmons planted here in the shade and it's doing very well. Oh, and I got a chestnut tree over here growing in the shade. Being overcome by all kinds of weeds, but it's growing. So we're just gonna let it go, see what happens. Most saplings gotta start the same way, heavy shade. I have another chestnut tree back in here, but that one died. Now we're in the jungle. Weeds are growing. See, I got a bunch of logs here on the ground just to leave them stay here and rot. There's a pawpaw tree in there in that little cage back in there. It's getting ate up and it's got all kinds of problems, but it's growing and it looks green. So we're gonna let her go. Here's another American persimmons, and persimmons and pawpaws both aren't affected by the black walnut chemicals. So this is really deep shade here, and you see it's grown pretty well. This is second summer. Here we have a currant bush growing in the shade. Look at the nice currants on it. Look at that. This is, I think, this is a Japanese heart nut. And then one of these is a butternut. That might be a, I think that's a, a Korean, no, I think this is a Korean, a Korean chestnut. That's what I think that is. And this is a Japanese butternut or heart nut. Jeez, I gotta remember. So here's a Russian apple I stuck back in here with the taproot. Here's an aronia. And the deer come in here and just eat like crazy on it. 
There's another current current that I planted in here. This is a baby. And this here is going to eventually be my zone four. I got a I'm a I got planned for a forest garden in here, and these are going to be taller trees. In the front on the south edge, I'm going to be putting in a little patch of pawpaws, and then from there it's going to be progressively higher. And um, I've already started a little bit. I've got um, here's a American persimmons right here. This is growing a little better. It's getting more sunlight. And I got some Chinese chestnuts. This is the the northwest side of the property here. There's a Chinese chestnut there. And there's one down here. And eventually, you know, they're going to shade all these weeds out. So we're just going to let the weeds do their thing. And what they are are pioneer plants. And their roots grow and their bodies grow. And then, you know, in the fall they die and go, grow, go back to the soil. And they build soil. And I got some black locusts behind the chestnut trees. So I think there's three, of, three, four of them in here that made it. And here's another black walnut. I got a couple of black gum in here. And I've got a line of uh, black gum and black locusts planted really close. This is the very northwest corner of the property here. And I got a Kentucky coffee tree growing. I thought it died, but it come back. I had a brutal winter. And a little stem there and it looked like it was dead. Even tempted to pulling it out, but it came to life. So this is the area here that I haven't planted anything yet. And I'll get to it. I got a bunch of brush piles here. The birds just love going in and out of those brush piles. And I've thought about all different types of uh, woody plants. This is kind of a wetter area, so I gotta be careful of that. It's the very bottom of the property. All the nutrients are coming here because I'm gonna be producing a lot of nutrients on this property now it all comes back here so I want to get some really high, highly productive trees something like 40 footers 40 to 60 foot trees back here all producers and right now it's just to weed and it's building soil here I got a pawpaw and I did something here that result, it resulted in a negative reaction. I've got five pawpaws back here that are in tubes. You can see they're growing in the tubes okay. That's one tube there. There's another tube over here. They're getting ate up and I thought well I'm gonna take the tubes off a couple of them see what happens. Maybe they'll grow a little better but it actually grew worse. They're so used to that tube when they got the sunlight on them they just burnt the leaves right up. So I thought about putting tubes back, but I thought, no, we'll see what happens. See if it comes back better next year, or if it dies, or what. But I can always plant more pawpaws. So it's kind of an experiment. And then remember I was talking about earlier, I had a bunch of potatoes that I got on clearance, seed potatoes. But I've been digging a pit back here. I've been taking this soil and bringing it up to the top and adding it to my garden soils. Well, I decided to throw those potatoes in the pit and I covered them up with uh, some dirt and a bunch of weeds and they're coming up. So we might get a harvest there. So that's the land that's being built up. I see yarrow, I see goldenrod, I see joe pie weed, um, catnip, lots of burdock. Just building soil. This is the space between the fences I was talking about before. I got all the fruit fruit bushes uh, planted in. Oh, I got June berries too. Here's a June berry. Right inside the fence. That's an aronia bush. Gonna get a couple this year. This thing was loaded last year, but deer came in and really hammered it. So you see that stake there that's apart from the wooden fence? That's the property line there. And the property does slope slightly this way onto the neighbor's, neighbor's grassland here. And you can see he planted these fruit trees in a horticultural type of a setting, you know, so many feet apart. 
in a line and they're not doing as good as my trees. But anyways, what I did was I dug a trench here on the outside of my wooden fence and I filled it with logs and a tree that felt blew down in the back. So I got one sticking out here in the end. But this entire spot here has logs buried in there and it's mounded up a little bit and I planted it with both alfalfa and clover. And as all the water and nutrients, if there's ever a big downpour, and most of it is going to get caught because I've got little earthworks all over the place now and get it to soak in all over, you know, where, where the rain falls. But if we had a deluge and it all kind of comes to this side of the property, this little mound is going to keep the water and the nutrients on, on my land. That's why I designed that there. I got a chicken wire fencing over my wooden fencing. That's to keep the rabbits out on the bottom. You can see I kind of came out here a little bit. So they they're come here to dig and they can't get in there. That's the corner. And then I got it loose on the top because raccoons don't like, you know, if, they're caught, if they're climbing up here and they get this looseness, they don't like to climb on that. So they're not going to try to go over that. So the books say. And this is a double fence. And then there's my grapes. And then I got cables strung up on those 10 foot posts. So that's 10 feet high there. And I also read that deer don't like to jump over fences at that angle. And it's probably, actually it's a steeper angle that they're promoting. Because they can't judge it. They won't jump over. Defenses. And it does take a little work to put all this together. I've been working on this now, I think this is my fourth summer. Slowly but surely it's all coming into shape. It takes time. But the idea is, is when I'm retired, all that heavy lifting is done and all that's left is maintenance and harvesting. And here I got a new planting. This is a comfrey plant here. And right behind I got a Russian mulberry. So they'll be companions for a while until the mulberry takes over. Here's another perspective from my little polyculture. That's a Korean nut pine. I got five of them on this side and I got five of them on the other side back by the wooden fence. And here's something interesting. So I tubed this Russian apple. And it's growing very well inside the tube. And then this one I didn't tube. And the deer are eating and eating and eating, but it's still alive. And we'll see if it makes it through the winter that way. This is a little, little hole I see bumblebees going in and out of. So I'm going to leave it there. Oh, there's one just come out now. This is a very expensive hazelnut tree that I bought, and it the winter killed it. I think this thing cost me like 25 bucks or something. But it sprouted out of the roots, and I'm just going to let it go. Um, if it uh, wants to be a bush, I'll let it be a bush. Here we got a sea berry next to a rhubarb. This is an almond tree that I planted, and it died from the winter, and it's also sprouting from the roots. A large patch of mint here, and I had planted a little precocious hazelnut here in it. It got chewed up, but then if I came in here, if you look really close, you can see, oh, there it is. It's growing in amongst the mint. Kind of neat. Ooh, it smells good in here. And this is some type of a snapdragon that's growing. I forget. My wife called it something like cream and eggs or something. It's getting to the end of its life. It's, it was really magnificent looking for most of the time here. This is my biggest apple tree that got girdled by mice. It was like 18, 20 inches of bark was gone, so I cut it, and now I got one little tree coming out of it. I'm expecting about 20 trees to come out of it, so I don't know why I only got one. Well, but I should be happy I got one.
bestest apple tree ever did. It's got a guardian now, it's a mullein. Look at that mullein plant. Growing right next to it. It's a biennial, so it won't be there next year. That's one of the seeds sprout right there. Thank you.